Good evening. This is Umoja 2 TV. We're here to bring you the quarterfinals of Section 2 AA basketball. I'm Coach Danzy, and alongside me is Coach Fullard. Uh, let me bring to you your attention. The Colony versus Green Tech game will be at 7 o'clock tomorrow. Shinohoa versus LaSalle will be at 5.30. Bethlehem versus Albany High will be at 4 p.m. Schenectady versus uh, Saratoga will be at 2 p.m. Coach. How you doing today, Coach? Doing good. Doing good. Very, very exciting time right now uh, for Section 2 basketball, in particular in this area. Uh, what we wanted to do tonight was we've uh, been on the road this year a lot, yes. you know what I mean? And we wanted to come. We had the fortunes of being able to have the coaches of Section 2 of AA um, grace us with their presence and grant us interviews and different things of that nature. So tonight what we want to do to kick off our show is we wanted to kick off each frame with kind of featuring our coaches right. and what they've done. A lot of times they don't get the, the notoriety and the recognition that they deserve for the hard work they put in. Right. You know what I mean? The being out there, hours. long hours, yeah. being out there and, mm -hmm. you know, uh, working with our youth out there and the Saturdays and all that kind of stuff. So tonight we wanted to start off by each frame and discussing the game by kicking it off with the coaches. So you yes. get started, Let's coach? get started. Let's get it, it in. Popping. <laughs> so... So the first one would be Colony uh, versus Green Tech at 7 o'clock, Coach. That's going to be a game that everybody's going to want to see. That's going to be a huge game, Coach. Ooh, it's going to be lit up in there at the Valley. Let's check these out, Coach, real quick. Coach, people throw terms around like statement games. What would you say about that? Statement game? I would say a statement game for us would be if we win section if we win the sectionals. Then I'll say we have a statement game. Up until then I, I you know, I think it's just a part of climbing the ladder and building your program. I Well talk to us a little bit about a victory like this and this part, this juncture of the season and moving forward into the sectionals. Well, last season we uh, lost our last two games. So this is a lot better winning this one and hopefully we get the Gilderland game. It's, you know, anytime you can build momentum, but honestly, since the first of the year, we've been building momentum. And really we've, it might be slight, but we're getting better every game. Whether it's Shen or it's Bethlehem or it's anybody else in the Suburban Council or Section 2, you know, we just stay the same. We're not, not too high, not too low. This gentleman over here, this student athlete, Bryce Waterman, came on tonight, found his shot, rebounded very well for us. Everybody else played well, and I thought we stuck to the game plan tonight. I saw early on in the game, Waterman came out, he put the team on his back, hit a lot of three-pointers for you. Can you speak to his game tonight a little bit? Yeah, I can. I can speak for for the last three years. Uh, you know, he's, been in, he's not been pleased with his shot the last mm -hmm. few games, and I think in all credit to him, he's stuck with it. And the night to have it was tonight. And, you know, he came through, and he also came through with the rebounds for us. Yeah, I think he had nine of them. Yeah, so mm. that's, that's big. That is big. Yeah, um, big. Speaking of which, big, Isaiah Moe. Talk a little bit about him tonight. Same thing. I think, you know, the three of them, I think Bryce and Isaiah and Will, you know, the three juniors, uh, they complement each other. And I don't think one would be as good without the other two. You know, so I don't think when you look at the three of them, you look at stats. Mm. You look at how they, what do they do for our team together. At the end of the night, you look at the three of them as one player. That's the way I do it. I look at the three of them as one okay, player. Okay, Coach, uh, what do you think about the uh, what you just seen there uh, with it? Coach, uh, Coach Daggs there? Uh, like, like when we were out, Coach Daggs keeps those guys at a steady pace and at a steady hand. You know what I mean? And he has been able to get those guys playing on one accord. And he's able to bring them together. We saw them evolve as they came along. He had a young team coming back from last year. It was projected to do a lot, and that's a lot of pressure on a young team. And Coach Dax has been able to have those guys kind of ride the ship and evolve to the number one spot in the section. Yeah, I like, I like what Coach Dag in the interview, man. He's a great interviewer. Um, gives a lot of information, um, kept us abreast of how his team is going, the mindset that they had going into the games. Um, very positive outlook. 
He really promotes his players in his interviews. You know, he really talks about them in a positive light. Um, you can tell he really loves those guys. You know, he really he really um, appreciates being around those guys. What he said about Waterman and other guys um, was just special. You know, I mean, I, I think if you're a player and you see that, you you know, you know this guy has your back. You know, and I think that's very special for the kids to see. Absolutely, I totally agree with you, Coach. Um, next, we feature uh, Jamel Hood Sr. of the Green Tech Eagles. Yes. Coach, what do you see yourself at this juncture in the season uh, with your team and moving into the latter part of the season and into sectionals? Well, you know, as, as you know, you know, I have, have the short memory, short-term memory. There's always tomorrow, there's always another game to the playoff start. So, you, ben you know, you benefit from a loss, you benefit from a win. So there's a lot of benefits that come from tonight's game. Absolutely. Finally, Coach, what did you say to those kids in the locker room after this, after this um, game? You got to regroup, come back, you know, fight. You know, it's, we have one of the toughest schedules in, in ever designed. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's made for the tough. So hopefully it pays off in there. So, Coach, how do you get your, your crew to regroup? You guys coming off uh, three straight losses right now. You're going to the latter part of the season into sectionals. How do you get your guys to refocus and regroup? I told my guys, I said, listen, first of all, you know, we designed this schedule to, um, to uh, be strong during the playoffs. It's kind of tough when you're coaching young guys and, um, you know, particularly two sophomores that are starters and some guys that have limited uh, senior, senior, I mean, uh, high school experience, I mean, varsity experience. No excuses, you know. We just have to have short-term memories. I got to remind them that um, we built this schedule to be playoff contenders, not playoff pretenders. So. Okay, Coach. Uh, you just saw Coach Hood there. What are your thoughts? Um. You know, they've been having like an up and down season right there. And what you saw right there is coaches just trying to keep them together, understand that uh, we design a tough schedule. And sometimes you're going to have those bumps in the road when you go out and you concoct a schedule as such as Green Tech has concocted this season for themselves. Um, so you saw a coach there trying to keep people, keep his team together in the midst of them having some little bit of struggles during the course of the season. They went on a little skid there where they lost about five games straight. Uh, and so he was just trying to keep that team focused and understanding what the big picture is, that, you know, you're going into sectional playoffs. I mean, he's been there, done that, kind of understanding what it takes when you get down to that point and understanding that it's still early on in the season and keep, keep the focus, keep doing the things that you need to do, try to ride this out, and we could catch fire because anything could happen and anything could change in the sectionals, Coach. I think that was his aim and what he was doing with um, trying to get that, um, that squad where they need to be. Yeah, as I, I, a constant thing that he was trying to get across was um, how tough his schedule was throughout the season. Right. You know, um, it kind of worked in his favor because he, he faced gets set and beat them in the first round. So it's the quarterfinal now. Um, so we're going to see, you know, how, how, how well that, how tough that schedule was and how much it prepared them. You right. know, so we'll, we'll find that out soon. Well, I mean, these guys came off of a nice, Big win against Shaker, at Shaker. Yes. So that was a good win for them. And so when you talk about, you know, getting your team ready and getting them prepared and designing a schedule that makes them battle tested, you know, you may say that this is paying dividends because in the first round you draw a team like Shaker by his no slouch by any stretch of the imagination, right. and you come up with a big victory in their home. Yeah. We, we'll see what happens. But however, Colony is in Shaker. <laughs> yes. You know what I mean, Coach? Colony yes. is in shape. No, by no, they got five guys that can give it to you. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And so we, we're, this is going to be an anticipated match. Mm -hmm. um, everybody want to go see, and um, we'll, we're going to we, we're going to find out, you know, um, how that schedule has prepared them. Yeah. You know, uh, against Colony. You know. Well, here's the here's the deal. This, they could be as prepared as they can possibly be. Right. Colony is a really good, strong team. Right, right. You know what I mean? And so, I, you know, earlier on in our previous broadcast, I, I, you know, I said it, I stand by it. I said, you know, I wouldn't expect them to make it to the Final Four and get this far, and this is why. You right. Hit, you hit, you hit a, a roadblock 
like Colony. Right. And right. and I gotta think Colony's been gelling all season. They've been coming along, coming on strong. They're peaking at the right time. They were able to ascend to that number one spot. Which I mean, I don't, the way this bracket set up, I don't even know if it was a favorable. No. <laughs> yeah, that was you totally know? unfair. <laughs> I'll so, let you expound on that in a second. Yeah. Folks. But what I'm just gonna say here is that I think that you know the road probably at this juncture ends right here for Green Tech. <laughs> I, I think Colony definitely pulls away with with this victory. Comes up with the victory in the end in this anticipated matchup. Yeah. Um, yeah. This. Uh, yeah. Like Cole, like you said, man. It, it's just. It's gonna be a tall order or order for them, but you know the kids play the game. You know that's why they get out there. And um, we saw—I know we're gonna talk about this game later, but we saw Troy and Albany play, mm -hmm. and Troy could not buy a basket. Right. So it could be—it might be a night where you you getting good shots. It is not falling for you. Right. If they catch a cold spell, you might catch them sleeping. You never know what might happen. Now, do I think that Connie is gonna win this game? Most likely, I believe they are. Okay. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Um, so that's where I'm at. But other than that, Coach, yeah, tr uh, Colony had a tough, got a tough schedule. Yeah, I don't know what call. Section Two was thinking about yeah, putting them call. in this in the, in, the, in this bracket here. You yeah. know, I mean, you get if you lucky enough to get past uh, Green Tech, you got to face uh, either Saratoga or Schenectady after that. And Shin, they play LaSalle, who's in the Colonial. Right. You know, um, then they then they you know they, most likely they're gonna face uh, Bethlehem in the in the in the, in the, in the uh, final in the final. So. It, it, you know, it's it just in the semifinal. In the right? semifinal, yeah, so I don't, I just don't yeah, you get how the number one seed is getting getting treated like this. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, I, it's beyond me to be honest, yeah. with you, Coach. But uh, on to the next one, Coach. So our next, our next coaching, our next coach featured here, in our you know featuring the coaches' night. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. So. Yeah, I think it's good to give the coaches some light. You know what I'm saying, Coach? Yes, and yes, yes. And it's a good, it's a good opportunity. So next we have Zekas of Shin and the Hole, Coach. And he comes up, and we already know what the Shin program is all about. Yes, sir. The um, number one player was out tonight. What was you looking to establish tonight in this game? You know, just to play as a team, get the best shot, move the ball, make them play defense for an extended period of time. And then defensively, we just wanted to keep, make them shoot outside John first with a hand up. What are you looking forward to going to the latter part of the season into sectionals? And what are you trying to convey to your team as you defend the section coming back this year? You know, we just want to get better every quarter, uh, uh, every half, every game. You know, that's what it's all about, good chemistry, not caring about who scores the points, getting good shots. we got a number of guys who can put the ball through the basket. Uh, tonight, Jake ended up with 19 points, but there, and at any given night, Chris Holver could end up with 19, 20. Big Piz could end up with 19, 20. So we got a lot of guys who have a big night on different nights. Okay, Coach, what do you think about, uh, what do you think about Shin, Coach? Well, I mean, Shin's been there, done that. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes. That, that's, that's how you describe Shin, they've been there, done that, and there, you know, Zeke is the guy. He's not going to get too overwhelmed with anything. He's not going to get too ahead of himself in anything. He's going to keep these guys steady, Eddie. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Going down the stretch in here and keep everything in perspective. Yes. See, when you've been there and you've done that, you know what it takes to win a chip and mm -hmm. you compete every year, year in and out, you kind of understand you don't get overwhelmed with the moment. Right. You kind of know what it takes, and that's right. what you see there with, with Coach Zeke. Yes, yes. Um, you know, it, it – they took a, quite a hit, Coach, you know, losing uh, Luke Hicks, you know. So um, I, I like to see, you know, how that's going to turn out for him. But like you said, quality program, quality coach. Um, kids know what's expected of them when they, when they, soon they sign up to join the team or tryouts or whatever. Right. They know what's expected of them, you know. Right. Um, so uh, I, I can see that I can see that being something that's going to pull them through the, in, this, in this particular matchup against LaSalle. Absolutely. Unfortunately, we don't have. We didn't do a lot of footage on the south or what have you. Uh, we, we know that they, they have a player, you know what I mean, um, for them that gets after it a little bit, who so they're stable, and you know brings a lot to the table. Yeah, I just know one one kid, uh, the Delolo De kid. Um, he's about six seven. Um, I believe he uh, got over three hundred points this year um, in this season of scoring this year. So he, he's the he's the workhorse for that team. Um, he's carried them. They also have, 
six guys in their team this season over 100 points. Mm, so they, okay. they, got a, they, got a, they got a strong six guys that can, that can put the ball in the hole. You know, and so you never know. You know, I haven't, we haven't saw them. We haven't watched one game of them right. all season. So it's hard for us to, you know, predict or anything like that. But, um, but Coach Sca- Sca- St- uh, Steve Scabalari, he's, he's been coaching for a long time True. at LaSalle. True. Um, True. He had gotten a lot of quality wins under his belt over the years. Um, struggled here and there um, uh, in, in those years as well. But um, I think he will, you know, get his guys up for this one. Right. You know. Right. They right. played a couple teams um, with double A, uh, you know, status. Mm-hmm. You know, they lost a, uh, they lost, they lost to Bethlehem, um, and it, it wasn't too bad. You know, it wasn't a bad loss. Um, they also they, they lost to a, a, a A team, which is in their league, Lansenburg. Right. You know, and that's no slouch. They lost them by one point. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so these, these guys can, these guys can play. I think they played them one time. I don't know if they played them twice, but I know they lost them one time. So Lanzaburg anyway, but, uh, so I think, I think these guys might, you know, m- might shock us and bring something to the table that we haven't, we haven't seen. We don't have anything on yeah, them. I, so I, it's hard to gauge. I, I highly doubt it. <laughs> 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 yes. I, I, I just do. I yes. just highly doubt. Yes. I mean, you, you do lose Luke Hicks and that's big. Yes. I mean, that's huge. You know what I mean? And I think at some point. It's going to prove itself to be huge. But in this game, I don't think this is the game that that will happen. Right, right, that's right. Just, that's just my right. take on it. So, Coach, next. Uh, what we have, Coach? We got Bethlehem and Albany High. Wow. Um, you guys, um, intensity was very high. How did you main? How did you manage to maintain that intensity the whole night? I called it an intensity mismatch. Yeah. Uh, well, see, that's our practice. Uh, practice intensity. Uh, we practice as if we want to play. Um, and if we're not, you know, if we're not working hard, we do drills to try to get us back at that intensity level. Um, we actually look at at games as kind of a night off, if, you, if, if anything, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah, like yeah. we go hard, 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 yes. everybody for two hours, and then we can sub guys in for two hours. Right, right. Like we can keep that intensity up all night, yeah. you know? So, and, and our bench, man, I mean, you can't ask for anybody we better. We saw that sometimes as... you went full court, man, you went three quarters, then you sat back in the one, two, two at different times. You gave these guys different looks all throughout the night. Yeah, so we have a lot of respect for what Shaker does. We think that, you know, the, the, the term our assistant uses, they're methodical. Like mm. if you throw the same thing at them over and over again, they're going to adapt and they'll figure it out. Right. So we're trying to, to mix it up as much as we could. A little bit of man, three-quarter court, full That's court. Right. Yeah. Um, trying to get some traps going in the half court. Mm-hmm. So just trying to do some different things and mix it up so they were not comfortable. Okay, Coach, um, what do you think? I mean, what more can you say really about Coach A.G. Iron? I mean, this guy, like you see near, this guy shows a poise. He's all about having his team work really hard. I mean, I mean, Coach – he alluded to something when he said, you know, my practices is like doubly harder than the game. You know what I mean? And it's funny because his players echoed the same sentiment. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. And anytime your practices is harder than the game, that's what you really mean when you say the game is fun. Right, right. That's right. the fun time yes. is the game. Yes. So, A.G. Iron, man, this coach, I mean, a lot of credit for those guys, the way they play so hard, Coach. They play extremely hard, Coach. Yeah, what are your man. thoughts? What are your thoughts on those guys? I, I think he was another one that was a great interviewer, Coach. He, you know, he spelled it all out. You know, he, you know, he, he, he's just a, a, a fun guy, you know. The, um, gave you a lot of insight on his players and the guys that he said um, – that he even brought up guys that didn't step up that night, that game, that game that we saw him play against Shaker, I believe. He brought up guys that that haven't showed up yet. Mm-hmm. And guess what? When it came to them, when they played Colony, they showed they up showed that game. Up. They did show up. You know what I mean? So Dude. he had a that's early. That was the second, that's the first or second game of the season when he Absolutely. said that. So he has he really does have a good he has a good feel for his guys. Definitely. You know what I mean? So that's what you call having a pulse for your team. Yeah, that's right. He that's definitely right. has a pulse for his team, man. Yes, and yes. he has a good foresight to know that. And that's a lot of times where you want to see where coaches can see and foresee that a guy is busting behind in practice. Mm. He's giving his all and doing the things that you like. Sometimes you see those things as the intangibles, but you kind of know at some point these things are going to show up and be helpful. That's right. That's you right. I mean, 
On to the next one, Coach Albany High. Well, we have Sean Brown here, Coach. You were saying when you're, uh, you're you're looking forward to the matchup, but the possible matchup with Bethlehem. Yeah, possibly. You know, you know, we um, we like that matchup. Um, you know, they 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 had a great win against us uh, during the season. Um, but you know, these kids worked hard all year. You know, regardless of the wins and losses, at the end of the day, um, they worked. Your team shared the ball very well tonight. I, their assist was really high of sharing the ball and being patient inside. What are your thoughts on that? major emphasis over the past four days major emphasis we we said to we said to these kids listen if the ball goes from left to right right to left you have many of scoring opportunities the defense will break down and that's been our Achilles heel all year long that we wanted to just take it on the first drive mm -hmm. um, but but over the past four days they believed they trusted what we had to say to them we had some ball reversals and and we had big guys cutting to the lane and finishing okay coach uh what are you thinking now? I mean, you got Sean Brown, Albany High. I mean, Albany High is one of those teams that has been really off the radar, so to speak, but most of the year. You know what I mean? And so what you saw there was Sean just, you know, keep trying to keep those guys engaged, keep giving them hope. You know, what you, what you as a coach, you say, hey, I'm always battling with these guys, and we're always trying to find ways to, you know, come out on top. You know what I mean, mm -hmm. and, and compete. Right. You know what I mean. So that's what you saw. That's what you see. With that's what Coach uh, appears that he is trying to keep those guys engaged and giving them hope that they could compete. And anything can happen at any given night, as we saw already yeah. when we were out and we um, broadcasted that game with them against Troy. Coach, what do you? Yes. Think? Yes. Um, yeah. Yeah. Sean. Sean. Sean got it done that day. You know. Um, uh, versus Troy. You know, like I said earlier, you know, Troy could not find. It was a lid in the basket. Yeah, it does most certainly was. I mean, guys got to the rim <laughs> and missed chippies, coach. <laughs> Missing free throws. I mean, if any night you it, it, you had to catch Troy tonight like that, yes. if you're Albany High, yeah, to yes. win that game. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. So um kudos to kudos to them and um to Sean getting his first um first round win yes. since being a Falcon. And I know he coached the LaSalle too, so I don't know. If, if he ever got a first round there, maybe he might have one of those years. Yeah, I don't man, know. I, I'm not you know? sure either. Coach, so kudos to him. He get he got it done this time. Um, Bethlehem is going to be a team that um, hard nose. If you're not bringing it, don't bother showing up. Don't bother showing up. You know, up. you might get you might get out of this game with a 15 pointer. I'm just being nice here. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, I, so, no, I, no, I understand. Um, like, let's show up for another night like 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 Troy did, where the guys are just not knocking it down. You know what I mean? Right. So um, so we'll see. We'll see. Well, what I'll tell you about this is that this is the thing with with uh, Bethlehem versus um, Albany High is that it's a bad recipe. It's a bad. It's a recipe for disaster. I'll say mm -hmm. because here you have one team on one hand, you have Albany High. We've been out. We covered them like three times. They have the propensity to turn the ball over. A lot. Right. You know what I mean? While I was out, they averaged around at least 15 to 18 turnovers a, right. per game. And then you have Bethlehem, on the other hand, coach, they bring it to you and they hard nose and they're up on you and they force the action on you. They give you different looks defensively. They switch it up on you. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just don't think Albany High is going to be able to withstand coach, their pressure. Coach, it, it, Troy and uh, Bethlehem are two different teams. Yeah, absolutely. I if, you go that three, if you go that 1 3 1 against them, you're going to get jump shot happy in yeah, your face. Absolutely. You go man to man, they're gonna they gonna go they're gonna go right to your chest. Yes, they will. They you know what I mean? They, they like the rebound. They're not that tall, but they like the bang. They, they, you they, know what I mean? Yeah. They hustle, go for loose loose on the ball for loose floor. On the, uh, they like to roll on the floor for loose balls. Absolutely. You know stuff like that. So it's a tall order. It is Hayden Thompson. It, that crew, yeah, man. you know Riker. Riker and all that. You know the way Otel is stepping oh, up yeah, now, yeah, and then God. Murray. Yeah, God. in the yeah. broadcast last time, I was calling him a, a sophomore. He's a senior. Right. Yeah. No one he was doing his thing. No one he was doing. Yeah. You know a lefty doing Absolutely. it. You know, so they got a strong. They do, they are comparable to Colony as yeah. far as having five quality guys in there at a time. There's no. There's, there's really no weakling. Right. You know, because right. Riker knows his role. He doesn't shoot too many jump shots. He's not going to shoot. He's not going to do things outside his comfort zone. Absolutely. You know what I mean? They got guys that just know their role, and they stick to it. You know what yeah, I mean? I, yeah, so I I they're, they're disciplined, Coach. You know, yeah. they're disciplined. Yeah, they are compared to Kali in the sense of five players who get after. I mean, skill-wise, that's, that's, yeah, that's, that's a little different. Yeah, that's a little different. That's a little different. Yeah, I have to say right now, I, 
it'd be a tall order. Yeah. I have to go with Bethlehem for Pelicans. Really not even. Cool. Yeah. 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 Really not even. Cool. Coach, we got Saratoga um, and uh, Schenectady Patriots. Coach, this is one of those games, I got to say up front before we start. Um, <laughs> this could, is really. You couldn't resist. <laughs> couldn't resist, Coach. This is unfair how the Section 2 committee mm -hmm. has put these two to meet in the quarterfinals. Yeah. You know, I don't know what they were thinking about. These two teams here um, were, 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 were doing their thing this season. Yeah, absolutely. You know, Schenectady was, was, was 6-0 and at one point. They had, a little rough, they had a little rough time in the middle, you know. Saratoga, they, towards the end of the season, they were like one of the better teams in the area. Yeah, I have to agree with you there as So well. how are these two guys matching up already in the quarterfinals? I don't know, this is scary, but I find myself agreeing with you more than I'd like to. Oh. I'll tell you that <laughs> right now. But, yeah, you're right. How do you, this is a semifinal matchup, even a final matchup. Yes. You know, depending on the seeding. But, yes, Coach, this is the, like a must-see, must-watch game here. Yeah. It's going to be entertaining. It's going to be explosive. Yes. Yeah, well, let me let me slow down because I'm, yeah, I'm almost getting in front of it as well, Coach. Yeah, this yeah, matchup yeah. Is. But, Coach, I got to say that. Yeah. I just like, I like these two teams, Coach. It's, too, it's just too bad we got to see them this early. Yeah, absolutely. You know, absolutely. I'm a little, I'm, I'm being a little unfair here. I mean, I just like these guys. I like these two teams. Yeah, real you know? treat for the fans here. Yes. They're going to see some really good guy, basketball with guys going after it. Yes. And, yeah, let's get in here and get started because, uh, you know, yeah, man. What can you say? Got Coach Usher, man, ready, ready to get it in Absolutely. with his boys, man. You look at him in there in the huddle, Coach. He is ready to get his guys and um, and really start this campaign to a Section 2 chip. Yeah, absolutely. Coach, uh, how did you manage to keep your team together through the adversity that they were experiencing at that juncture in the game? Yeah, this, this group, I'll tell you what, they, they never quit on each other. They are a tight group that really, you know, they never start pointing fingers. They never doubt themselves. They're, they're very confident. They know what they're capable of. And we've, you know, we've had a couple games where we didn't play well, mm -hmm. and they never turned on each other. They never started pointing fingers. And it's the same within the, the, the flow of a game, too. You know, should they be frustrated that they missed a shot or turned the ball over? But, you know, we're trying to work on, you know, moving on and making, making the next play. So hopefully we can continue to get better at yeah. that. When we get good shots, we got guys that can hit shots between Adam and AJ and some of these other guys. It's just being smart, not trying to do too much, and making good decisions and not letting their pressure get to us. What do you think a victory like this does to your season in the latter part going into the sectionals? Yeah, it's a big win. Obviously, it's a talented team on the road. Uh, we got three games left, starting with Tuesday, uh, our senior night against Niski. So we're just we're hoping to keep building on this and keep improving so that come sectional time, we're at our best. Okay, Coach, what do you think? Yeah, Coach. We like Mark Rusher too, Coach. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah, Matt is something. He's a, yeah, Matt's a good interview. Yeah, he's another guy who, uh, Coach, you could, during the interview, like I said, and once again, I mean, I, I don't want to overstate it, but I'm glad we're featuring the coaches. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah. Definitely want to give them their just due here. And, um, yeah, Coach Usher got those guys playing, clicking on all cylinders, Coach, and uh, several times we were out seeing them. You could just tell it was just like a steady hand. Kept those guys at an even kill, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, and kept them focused on the um, goal at hand. And from what I what I saw out with those guys and seeing their play and watching them, I mean, this, he got those guys playing well, coach. And not to mention, coach, I mean, you know, the way that these guys draw plays out of the huddle. I mean, we saw that, you know, <laughs> and, and, and you know, we did the play of the week where we yes. showed AJ Lawton hitting the big three mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that actually put them into overtime. But yes. what preceded that was a lot of Good, you know, uh, uh, good plays that were drawn up. You know, what I mean, clipboard stuff. That's yes. what I. That's that's the word yes. I'm searching for. Yes. You saw this guy do some real good clipboard work yeah, over yeah. there on that sideline, yeah. and then you saw the players executing, yeah, coach. Yeah, coach, what's yeah. your thoughts, coach? Yeah, coach. We asked him about that. You know, about those out of bound plays, those special team plays, like as we like to call them. You know, mm -hmm. um, he said, yeah, he works on them. Said he likes to work on them, you know, a lot, even more than the kids. You know, they get upset with them because they work on them so much, about, you know, with them. So, it, I think now the kids buy buy into that now. You <laughs> know what I mean? Agree. <laughs> yeah, I mean the I coach knows what he's talking about. I mean, you know, those those special plays come up um, a lot of times that a lot of people don't understand. Like you said before, coaching the broadcast, I think it's just something about eight times a game you might oh, get a possession yeah, or twelve yeah, times. I forget yeah, the yeah. word you said, but you know, I, right now, man, he's my special. 
special teams coach. My out of bound uh, special team type of coach, man. I mean, by Absolutely. far. I mean, this guy looks to get baskets on those opportunities. Well, you know how I feel about that, coach. You know my, you know my sentiments that like you just alluded to. My thing is that you're looking at probably averaging eight to ten out of plow, out of bounds plays a game right. per game. Those are eight to ten scoring opportunities. Right, right, right. You know, right. you're not going to get twenty points out of them, but if you get half of that, that's ten points. Yeah. A little lob here, yes, you know what I mean, to yes. the big man. A little screen here, yeah. you know what I mean. Yes, yes, yes. Those are opportunities for points, and it seems like Coach Mark Usher takes liberty at taking the opportunity to make those scoring opportunities. That's right. like it. That's right. And, and he promotes his players, coach. You know, he talks about his guys and, you know, he, gives, he shows a lot of affection for him. You know, you can tell the guys really like playing for him. Absolutely. You know what I mean? You can just feel it, you know. And, coach, you see it from the colony. You see it from the Saratoga coach. Um, you see, even you even see it from Coach Loudis a little bit. Right. Um, and um, from um, from the Bethlehem coach, coach, you see that AG Irons. Yeah, Irons absolutely, absolutely. You see from those guys that they 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 really let their guys rock out. Mm-hmm. There, Colony has five guys. Right. Really, really, a, they got six guys, but they really rock out with five guys. Right. Those guys play major minutes throughout the season. Absolutely. Foul yeah. trouble will keep them on the bench. Other than that, those guys are out there. Same thing with um, Saratoga. Mm-hmm. Those guys all play heart is out there. AG, um, AG, um, Lawton out there. You know, um, Mr. Anderson, the Matrix, the Matrix out is out there. Yeah. I never see them guys sub out. Yeah. So them guys, real, them, them guys have the confidence from the coach that if I make one little mistake, I'm not coming out the game. And those guys know enough to value his possession because he's coaching them in practice. You know, absolutely. So, Coach, what you see, uh, real quick before we move on, yes. but what you see with the teams that you just mentioned, what you saw, what I saw with those guys, it was a cohesiveness about those guys that they loved playing with one another, they trusted yeah. one another, and they all knew their roles with one another. Yes, and yes, that's what yes, I noticed yes, with those yes, teams. Yes. And there's yes. no secret why they're successful. Anytime you get kids playing on that level, right, and they're right. buying into it. And they know who the leader is, and the leader is deferring to them. Yeah. And he's saying, I trust in my guys. And we say, yeah, that, that's where you want to be at. That's you know right. I mean, that's coach? right. That's right. So we got, we got Schenectady, Coach, uh, coming up next. Coach Loudest. Coach Loudest. Yes, we do. Thank you. You experienced some foul trouble early on in the first half. Some in the second half, too, particularly with uh, John Rouse. How did you manage to sustain yourself and your squad during that period? I think this year, compared to other years, I have a little bit more depth uh, on my bench. And it was time for those kids that were on the bench to kind of step up and uh, do what they need to do from practice. Uh, they, they go through it every single day. So out in the real lights, I had to go about 9, 10 deep today compared to what I normally do. Mm-hmm. But those kids came through and gave me valuable minutes to get us through that third quarter so we can make our push in the fourth. How do you feel about Nesbitt game tonight? He seemed to come off the bench and give you some really meaningful minutes. He's been doing that for us all season. Uh, that's, he knows his role. We talked about that during the beginning of the season. Uh, he's only been playing basketball for a couple years. So uh, he knows what he needs to do, block shots, take charges, rebound the ball. And he did everything I asked him to do, minus the technical foul. But uh, uh, it was just, you know, he got caught up in the moment of the game. And, I, you know, Hey, kudos to him. He gave me. He did a great job. Coach, give me some thoughts on um, Jenkins and Westbrook game. Oh, they played huge. Uh, you know, TJ's been battling through uh, some foul trouble the past couple of games, some tough fouls, and he's fouled out in the last three games. So we talked about in practice uh, yesterday with the one day to prepare. Hey, just don't reach, move your feet. I need you in the game to uh, step up. Uh, Westbrook, he's been hitting threes like that for for years, and. Uh, He's a senior now, and it's his last chance, and we know that's what I need him to do. I said, if you have the open shot, I want you to shoot it because it looks beautiful coming out of your hand. Yeah, Thanks. Coach Loudis. I mean, battle-tested guy right there. I mean, he knows how to motivate his team. He knows how to get the maximum effort out of those guys. And he's another team that when we interviewed those kids and we spoke with those kids, yeah, yeah. you could tell they had a genuine affection with playing with each other. Yeah. And they was trusting one another and just trusting in the process. Right. So I think Coach Lowers has been able to, with the loss of Tobias Harris, yeah, Tobias Holmes, oh, Holmes, 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 yep. Tobias Holmes, he has been able to next man up, fill in those gaps. Not that Schenectady is any short of any talent anyhow. Right, 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 right. So that, that's not really their issue. Mm-hmm. But Coach Loudest, I mean, I li- just like the way that he has shown. He teaches those kids poise, you yes. know what I mean, yes. patience, mm-hmm. and he, he trusts the project. And what I like what he was able to do when we watched him out was 
when his kids got in foul trouble, he was able to push the right buttons to get the right. You had Nesbitt coming in. Yeah. So, I mean, sometimes people think that when you're coaching, you just yank guys off the pitch and throw <laughs> right. them in the game. Right, man. right, you're right. You're actually right. trying to see what matches what situation, in-game situations, what you need at that time, a defensive stop, a person who can zone bus, zone the bus. You no might question. have a guy that's been sitting on the bench for the majority of the time, and you yank him out. He might be one of your shooters that you just need at that moment. That's right. That's right. You know what I mean? That's so right. his ability to push certain buttons, yeah. you know, on that team and get those guys playing when they had foul trouble or what have you mm -hmm. speaks volumes to what he does. And it only can vote well for him down the stretch when you get in these type of situations when you're going into the playoffs, right. and you're going to need, probably need to do that. Yes. You know what I mean? That, yes. In those situations, Coach. Yes. yes, Coach Loudest, man. He definitely gets the most out of his guys. I mean, he's, a, he's, 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 uh, he's relentless on that sideline. You know, he's pacing up and down, yeah. you know, clapping it up, getting feedback from his, his, his co assistant coaches on the sideline. You know, his father's on the sideline. So that's – you can't what, – what better advice can you get other than that? Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Um, so, I mean, he's showing that he's a team player from a coaching staff. Right. So, what could the kids go? The kids can emulate that. Yes, you know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you know, he's he's fiery, he's active, you know. Absolutely. Um, I don't see him too much of a screamer, and that's a good thing, you know. Um, but he will bark on you. You know what I mean? He will bark sure. at the refs. But he doesn't seem to be like that. He's more of a, a stare you down type of guy, like right, a little yeah. pit bull ready to you know, get at you. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, but, you know, he, he seems like a guy that would be fun to be with in practice and – He's another guy, coach, that let let your let your let your main guys rock out. Yeah, you know what absolutely. I mean. He did take um, Royals out that game because he was mm -hmm. going a little hyper fast. Right. He sat him down to talk to him, give him a few seconds to sit down, think about what you need to do, um, readjust your game a little bit, right. and put him right back out put there. Him right back out there. You know he's not gonna put you in the bitch and forget about you. Yeah. You know what I mean. No, so, no. It, you know, it's things like that that I see that I really like. Man, I like the guy. I like the coaches out here that that really like to teach. Mm -hmm. You know. Who uh, when they when, and they commit to a, a a particular player or players they commit right. to them, um, and then you stick by them. Right, absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, all that shuffling in and out, thirty guys when you you know when you bring another guy who's just not as good as the guy you took out, that's just nonsense to me. You know what I mean? So um, that's a coach that doesn't really know um, what he has. You know, what I mean, if you ask me, coach. But you know, he seems to be on board. But coach, you know, we got Saratoga's. Yeah, I'm sorry, Coach. Okay. I, I, I mean, to interject here. Yeah. What we do want to do is we want to send a, a, a hope, a get well wishes to Papa Loaded, Loudest, Loaded, because I know that he was having some health issues at work. Oh, I okay. That nature. Am I correct? I, I'm pretty sure I'm correct here. Okay. So we want to send a special shout out to him. Yes, and yes, get well. well with the loudest family Coach Loudest, and yes. His, things of that nature. But go ahead, Coach. Yeah, um, you got Schenect you got Saratoga versus um, Schenectady, Coach. What is it? <laughs> That's well, four versus five right there, Coach. Coach, I make no secret, make no bones about it whatsoever. Two o'clock game, Coach. Two o'clock game, Coach. Earlier on, starting you off fresh. Yes, yes, yes. Right out the gate. Right, the right gate. off the rip. Huh? Yes, right yes. off the tip. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah absolutely, yeah. Coach. They're getting it off and in early. Um, I made no bones about it. I made no secrets about it. I've been a, a Matrix guy all season, yeah. pound for pound, my best player in the section. I mean, and I had, I just, my pick has been Saratoga all along, and I'm not backing away from that pick. Right. You know what I mean? By no stretch of the imagination would this be an easy lay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Schenectady is battle-tested, and like we said earlier in um, our, our other sectional show, yes. where we wouldn't be surprised if Schenectady was there at the end. Right. But with Saratoga, man, I just believe that Adam Anderson is a major difference. Mm. You know what I mean? And he's not the only difference. He's mm. just a major difference for Saratoga. Right, right. You know, when you couple that with, you know, A.J. Lawton and Hart yes. and the point guard that I, I Tillman. Just, Tillman, the yes. point guard that I like. Yes. I think these guys just bring a steadiness. They trust one another. And I think down the stretch, the reason, the reason why I like Saratoga is because down the stretch, when it comes to you know, tight time, when it comes, you need a bucket. When you come, need somebody to, you know, produce something for you. Yeah. Adam Anderson is that guy. And it just, like, comes down to it, like, we have him and you don't. Right, 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 <laughs> right, 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 right. I mean, I yes. haven't seen guys cook up as fast as I've seen him cook up. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this guy has been yeah. out and had 16 first quarter points and yeah. within no time and things of that nature, Coach. So, yes, yes. And, But like I said, you know, moving on, connecting these guys with Roy Owls and all those guys, I mean, you cannot count them out by any stretch. Nah, you know what I mean? Nah, and Jenkins, nah. Jenkins yes. was named to, 
Yes. You know what I mean? So yes. he has got some little accolades himself okay. along this way. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? And, yep. you know, I like Jenkins. I yes, think yeah, I know. Yes, 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 boys. Yes, yes. So, I mean, this yes. is a tough one for me, but I have to stand by my pick. Well, Coach, we're going to see because, you know, we talked about the coach. We like both of these coaches. We do. You know, and the coach is Styles again, you know. Right. Is he going to stick with that 3 2 all day if, 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 Anderson, if, if, if Anderson is, you know, spotting up, AJ is spotting up in that corner, knocking yeah, it down? Yeah. You know, if Tillman gets hot on the wing, the little point guard there, right. I mean, you're going to stay there, you're going to go man to man chest up. But then that's what Anderson is going to go buck bananas. You know yeah, what I mean? It's tough. So it's tough. It's, pick your poison. But I do like what you're saying because I really think that there may be a situation where it's not about even staying specifically to one type of defense, mm-hmm. one or the other, right. it may be a balance of sort, of sort. Right. It may take them to have to play a little bit of zone, maybe switch up to a little man, maybe a matchup here. And I know they're not accustomed to doing that, and I know it might be a little bit out of their element. However, you do whatever it takes at that time with the situation called for in order you to propel in a game. Right, right. You right, know what I mean? Right, so, right. that I mean, that's the bottom line. Yeah. In, in my estimation, I don't think that you can be lock yourself in to one way because we know there's no one way of winning. Mm. You know, no, 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 no. Part, part of the whole thing with, with um, being on that sideline is one of the biggest components of being on that sideline is strategics. Yeah, that's you right. Know what that's I mean? right. That's, that's what, right. You know, that's right. A lot of times what you can have with coaches, you can have a situation where you can have everything lined up. You can come in with your game plan. You can come in with all of this stuff. You done scouted. You done did all your, you know, your homework, dotted your I's and cross your T's. And then you get in the game plan and you plan for zone because this is what they've been playing mm-hmm, on here. Mm-hmm. Like we saw with Troy and Albany. Right, exactly. You know right, what I mean? That's right. Albany's primarily man-to-man. They right. came in and surprised Troy with a 1-3-1 one, one zone. Right. Threw him off. Troy went ice cold. Yes. You know what I'm yes, saying? Yes, so yes. we know you can come in with one game plan and things can change on the fly. And part of the coaching acronym, the coaching aspect of it, is mm-hmm. being able to adjust on the fly. That's right. That's so right. if it's That's different right. things that may call for it, you may have to abandon that 3-2 for sometimes in different points yeah. in the game. In that, order to do and that really goes for all the coaches, really. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens. And then, you, like you said, too, like, you know, foul trouble could be an issue. You have to go, you know, you have to change your defense because of that right. situation. You know what right. I mean? Exactly. So, you know, exactly. a lot of reasons um, to switch up and do other things. But you're not going to escape on me here. I, I mean, I, I, I got to hear your pick here. I mean, this is a big, huge game right here. I yeah, think. this game is a uh, 2 o'clock game. Are you kidding me? Um, yeah, uh, I like Saratoga. I like Schenectady. Um, it's really, you know, up in the air here. Look how you do that. It's not yeah. how you do that. You go, uh, you go, I like Saratoga. You got me going, oh, okay. He, he agrees with me. He sees the light. <laughs> He's awakening. And then he goes, pause and go, I like Schenectady. I'm going to take – I'm going to take – I'm going to take Schenectady in this one. Mm. Schenectady in this one. That's your story. You sticking to it? I'm sticking to it. <laughs> but I wouldn't be mad if Saratoga wins. I'd say that. <laughs> but <laughs> no, I'll take Schenectady because um, their length and Saratoga beat them last time they played. Mm-hmm. So Schenectady owes them one. Right. Okay. So okay, motivation. Motivation. You know, Jenkins does not want to end the season in the quarterfinals right now. You know what I mean? He wants to. He wants that section two title. Mm-hmm. He wants it bad. Deshaun Westbrook wants it bad. You know? Um, so, and Riles, who, who we seen what didn't play that well that day. And he still got the win. Are you suggesting so, that Lawton doesn't want it bad? Or, 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 or the Matrix doesn't want it bad? I don't, I mean. I don't know. I think, I get, I think Schenectady has more motivation in this game because they lost to him last time. Okay. okay so, I, I think they're just more man. hungrier. You know what I mean? They're hungrier. You know, so. It's something about being, you know, the hunted. Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. The hunter. It's, it's, it's something to be said yes. about that. Yes. You know what yes. I mean? I, 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 I don't agree with what you're saying. <laughs> I understand the sentiment in which you are expressing it. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> I understand the way you are disseminating your information. Yes, but at the yes. end of the day, I, I, I think you throw that all out the window. I think Saratoga is just as up for this game as Schenectady. I, I, I think that other game, you learn from it. It might serve as a little bit of motivation. On the other hand, if I'm Saratoga, <laughs> we beat these guys already, yo. We, all, we already beat That's them. another way to look at it. You know what I'm saying? We, we already beat them. Let's go handle our business. We know what it is. And like I said, you know, not to you know, overstate it, you know, you got the best player in Section 2 on your team. <laughs> Jig is definitely ain't too far. I tell you <laughs> you know, that. I, I, now, I, now I listen, I'll ahead, give you, the one thing I would say, if, if Jenkins stay out of foul trouble, 
and he's knocking that three ball. He's probably the most, I can't say that. He's one of the most versatile, I'll just say that. He's one of the most versatile players yes. in the area. I agree. At 6'6", six, six, he can do what he does. Yeah, I He can hit the three. He can, he can dribble the ball open, an open floor. You know, he'll bang like a grown man down, down low, yes, and he, he has does. the size to finish. Yes, he does. And he can knock down free throws. So if he gets out of foul trouble, it's going to be a problem. Hard can't stay with uh, Mr. <laughs> Jenkins. Huh? <laughs> Nah, the sophomore they got there, huh? That we saw come in, gave um, in, in the Green Tech game for Saratoga, who gave him, who gave him a lot of minutes, yes. cause he 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 got rebounds, you know. He, he didn't score much. Had a nose for the ball. Had a nose for the ball, you know. Adam ring. Adam Putnam or something. I forget what his name. Is. I'm gonna call him Adam P for now. Okay, go ahead. You know what I mean? Right. Um, Andrew or Andrew, I believe his name is. Um, he 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 can't mess with Mr. Jenkins. <laughs> no way. So uh, I'm just thinking now, Royals is, if Royals goes off, he could be one of the better players in the area too. Absolutely. If he goes off, yep. they got more. They got more talent. They do. They do have more pa uh, player for player, position by position. position. Yes. I have to give you that. I would. I definitely agree with you. And that was what kind of twirled in my mind as you was, yeah. you know, going off. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you didn't convince nothing. No, uh, here we go. I, I here anybody. <laughs> they out there maybe you may convince them if they were leaning on the fence. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I I agree with you. Uh, uh, player per player, position by position, Schenectady yeah. you know, is the better team, yeah. and, and they probably have a better bench as well. Yeah. You know, with this big yeah. coming off. Yeah, the bench, yeah, right? yeah. So, but I just think that it comes down to it is. I think Saratoga, I mean, they play well together. Mm -hmm. They play within their lane. They stay in their lane. Right, right, right. And I right. think that is so yeah, crucial and that's important. That's true. You know what I mean? That's true. And they stay in their lane, and that's why I think when it comes down to stretch, if I had to choose a team, you know, um, this, this matchup particularly, I have to stick with Saratoga, mm -hmm. you know, at this point. But, yeah, I think it's going to be a real, yeah. real. Get your popcorn. Yeah. This, this is, is going to be a dandy match, right here. Yeah, really this might be the best game. On Saturday. Yeah, you know what? I, style make fights. Yes. Yes. Style make fights. And these two teams match up relatively well. Yeah. And they're going to go at it. And yes. they got They got athleticism out there. They got people who can score in bunches. Yes, yes. You know what I mean? So yes. it's going to be really interesting to see how these teams come out and how well they match up against one another and what determines the game down the stretch. Right. That's right. That's right. Okay, the recap, Coach. Um. I'm gonna give you an opportunity just to just, just, uh, just to give your 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 your, uh, your take on the team. I'm gonna give you one minute to explain. I'm gonna rebuttal. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we got Colony Green Tech. Uh, we got a one versus a uh, nine there, Coach Nine Seed. So mm -hmm. what are we thinking? That's a seven o'clock game, a uh, late game. So depending on how the other games go, I might still be awake. I don't know if I'll be awake for that one yeah. after watching after watching uh, Schenectady and uh, Saratoga go at it. You know, right, so right, right, um, yeah. so we'll see. What, what do you think, there, Coach? Minute, one minute. <laughs> Get it all in in one minute. <laughs> I got the clock right here. This is an interesting matchup here, only because it, it, all those are one versus nine. See. That, that, that seed, throw that out the window. That's not an indication of how this game kid could turn out. But at the same time, it could turn out very much that way as yeah. a one in nine seed. Right, right. You know what right, I mean? Right. Seeing look like, like a mismatch. Right. Green Tech has the ability to come in and compete with Colony. Mm -hmm. They can hang around with Colony. But I just believe that Colony, from what they've been through this season, the way they're gelling together, and Isaiah Mole, what his will that he imposes on the inside – and them being able to have all the different elements covered with, with Will Avar being a steady general, it'd be hard for Green Tech to trap that team. You know what I mean? Because even Isaiah can handle the ball on the open floor. He even gets it off the till and push it in the yeah. open floor. Yeah. I think it's just going to be too much for Green Tech to handle. Yes, you're, yeah, I, I can agree with that sentiment um, wholeheartedly. You know? um, it's really going to be the motivation of what uh, Isaiah Moe comes with that game. We see them, Coach. It'd be times in games where he just, just out there, just – Happy be out there, you know. It ain't enforcing his will. Right. So this game, this type of game, I think he knows what's his important, what's at stake right here, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the prime time players step out in prime time games, you know. Bottom line, right. you know. But you know, Green Tech, coach, um, they play very well against uh, Shaker from what we've been told, you know. Mm -hmm. Um, and then you, you know, the the guy we didn't talk about who stepped up in that game was the uh, Curry kid. 
You know, he stepped up huge for them. A wiry kid, young guy, sophomore. Um, with, with him with Tobias Holmes, um, giving them another another uh, outlet to get some buckets. So that that was good to see from from Green Tech. You know, another guy stepping up. But I just don't know if the young fella will do that against Colony. Yeah, without it's... taking them out their rhythm of how they like to do things. Right. So I don't know. I got an issue with how their chemistry. Yeah. No, I totally. Uh, agree that's a big. Their, that's a big. A gripe of mine with Green Tech. Yeah, you know well, I mean? my thing is that I, to think that Curry would have a similar game that, that he had against Shaker, I would venture out to say, is it possible? Yes. This kid is athletic in the open floor. He could, when he chooses to finish strong around a basket, he has the propensity and the ability to do so. Right. All right. Colony is a whole nother breed. <laughs> Whole right. nother level. A whole nother level. It's <laughs> yes. levels to this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's a whole nother level. Yeah. So, with that having been said, to come out and think that he's going to have a repeat performance in a game against Colony, I seriously doubt it. Green Tech will have to rely on a cohesive unit, doing things by committee. They will have to play together like they haven't played together in any <laughs> other game thus right. far this season right. in order to come out with a victory against Colony. That's true. That's true. I mean, it would be good, interesting to see the point guard play in that game too, Coach. You got uh, Will Abar, outstanding guard, outstanding floor general. Yes. You know, um, it, last time they played against Green Tech, he stepped up. I believe he had 15 or 16 points for them, you know. Um, that would be a good matchup. I, you know, I can see what Mark, how Marcus Friend um, will compete against him. I like to see that, you know. Um, you know, you also got Tobias, you know, going up against Waterman. I like to see how that matchup goes, right. you know what I mean? Um, Waterman has the size, right. you know. They both can shoot it, but, you know, Waterman has more, 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 more accuracy, more consistent with his jumper, you know. Yes. And then you got Varma. Now, I don't think Varma is going to have uh, Emil Rodriguez guarding um, Isaiah Moe. I, I, Rodriguez can't guard everybody. He's their best defender. He can't guard Isaiah Moe either. Uh, no, but he's their best defender. He can't guard Isaiah Moe, though. I, what, what, I understand where you're going. You're, he's a best defender. He right. can't guard, you say he can't guard everybody. Right, right. My point is, yeah. even if you put him on Moe, he can't guard Moe either. But yeah. you got to put him on him. you got to put him on him. I haven't seen nobody stop Moe. Only person I've seen stop Moe is Moe. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. right, that's, right. All, that's the point I just wanted right. to interject. Okay, Go ahead, okay. Coach. And then you got Varmer probably guarding uh, Mosin. You know, Mo uh Varmer's blocking everything in that paint. He is. Mo might have a little issue with this game he here. He might have an issue. Uh -huh. He's the human rejector. That's right. That's a the young rejector. that young fella, that sophomore coach. He 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 has a lot of tenacity with him. A lot of upside to that kid. A lot of upside to him, coach. Yeah, I would love to be coaching that, that kid. kid, you know. Um and then you and then you uh finish up with the uh with the uh, I don't know who the other guys were them, but we got Connie has Josh P. Right. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, the, yeah. He's a little feisty little guard he too. Is. You know what I mean? You cannot overlook him. No. We saw him come in when Will Abar got in foul trouble yeah. and gave them meaningful minutes, and yes. he wasn't scared. No, no, he wasn't. No. And, and he could knock down a jumper Absolutely. too, coach. You Absolutely. know what I mean? Absolutely. So, um, it's really even, uh, not, well, a little not even, but it's pretty close on paper. Well, uh, let's see what the, here's the thing. You, you said even, but coach... I, I mean, you're not out of the realm by saying, and I don't like to agree with you, but it's like you're not out of the realm by saying even. Right. Let me tell you why. Green Tech has a bench. Yes. You're talking yes. about Rodriguez. You didn't even get to the big fella. Uh, Herbert? No, the big fella for Green Tech who gives him, he's a scrappy big guy. Herbert. Fuquan. Oh, Fuquan Ford. Yeah, That's right. Yeah, That's yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 You mentioned other guys as well on the line. See, yeah. You know, so what I'm saying is they have a You got bench. Lakey over there. You, you know, have, they have a bench where Colin E. Connor, where they're struggling. That's with true. Their bench. That's true. So you're not far stretched by seeing even. I think these things bound out. Yeah, you got one of the better players, hands down, in Isaiah Moe. Right. Many would argue is the best player. Right. You know what I mean? In right. the section. Right. And, he, and you won't be wrong for making that mention. Right. You know what I mean? Right. But right. 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 Across the board, yeah. Green Tech has a strong bench. So it'll be interesting to see how this plays out, Coach. Yeah, that's, well, people, that's a 7 o'clock game. So get out there and check that one out. Um, I think you need to get there early. It might be a sold out, uh, sold out uh, game. I'm a little disappointed, Coach. On a side note, with the uh, Section Two fans this year, uh, a lot of the gyms we went to, Coach, it wasn't filled up like we thought they would normally be. You know, but hey, uh, hopefully uh, this this tomorrow it'll change. Yeah, I'm, you know? yeah, I suspect that it will. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Coach. We got uh, we didn't talk about. Uh, let's go over again. Uh, Shin Lasalle. Um. 
I think we both agree that Shin will walk away with this yeah, one. Yeah, um, I mean, he's spent a lot of time and, and get through and get through that one. We got uh, the next one's Bethlehem uh, versus Albany, Coach. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, you got you got the Eagles versus the Falcons. You know, so um, that it's gonna come down to you know, um, uh, can 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 Albany High uh, do what they did against Troy, which was give a lot of assists, share the ball, you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, be tough on the glass, li limit them to many, uh, a lot of times the one shot, that was right. it, you know. Right. Or, I mean, all right, I, I know they got one shot clock violation on Troy. They might have had another one. Yeah. But I know they got one. So uh, they keep that defense intensity up. Um, that would be great. You know, Terry's playing wonderful right now. I like even Terry. Even Matt Coons went down low that game, Coach. Yeah, he, did, he did well. But you know, like got the little bunny. Terry, yeah. yeah, Terry, yep, yep. I like that um, kid, Terry. He's big. It, his side, he offers some, some presence inside that yes. they lack a little bit. There. Yes. Um, also, you know, um, you know, those, I, I think, yeah, I think those three guys there um, with Amadi really setting guys up, getting it, getting it, getting it good. You got Terry um, really, provi really providing the inside um, for them. Um, I think I think what the thing is with those guys, they got the, he usually uh, Coach Brown used a lot of bodies, mm -hmm. but is you know it's a big drop. You know what I mean when you when you go to the bench. You know yeah, what I mean. You so you use all the bodies. Is this for? I don't know what that's for. Well, you know what I mean? Sometimes getting guys blows. Getting yeah, some, you guys, were like, like got a foul trouble. You got two minutes left. That's in the different. Quarter, foul a, trouble is something different. Well, but, what, you know. Or two minutes left in the quarter, and you're trying to get a guy in to preserve your guy from getting foul yeah, trouble. You yeah, got yeah. that kind of situation yeah. going on there. You don't yeah. really yeah. Can't oh, a case. Yeah. point to no guy and say, this is the guy who's going to give me like 15 minutes off the bench tonight. <laughs> and I'm really relying on him. Right, right. He's right. kind of got a skeleton bench over there. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I just. See, my thing with the whole Albany High thing, and I, and, I, and I like the fact you made a great case for Albany High and the things and points of emphasis yeah. that they need to do to right. particularly um, possibly compete in this game. Right. You know what I mean? And my thing with the whole thing is that I've been out, I've seen Albany High on several times, and you usually don't change your colors. You know what I mean? You really don't change your stripes. Right. And my whole thing is the situation is that now you're coupled that with the fact that you're talking about a sectional game. Yeah. You're talking about being under the lights. Yeah. You know what I mean? And you already have a propensity to turn the ball over. Mm. When you mm. have a team that puts the kind of pressure that Bethlehem puts on you, yeah. and then you have another team that is turnover prone with the ball, right. that's not a good recipe for you to be successful. I, I mean, Albany High, isn't, can they compete against Bethlehem? Yes, they got the tools to compete against right. Bethlehem. Right, right, right. You know what I mean? But. Those little things like that that people may overlook, may not think of a big deal, that's a huge deal. Right. And right. when you're talking about playing, you're talking about turnover team playing, even Coach Hurley said, he might venture out and say Bethlehem's the toughest team in the, in the yeah, 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 yeah. You know I, will, I, will, I, I, was, I was happy with Albany High, Coach. They showed a little IQ last game against Troy. Mm -hmm. Those guys were being, Troy was overplaying them on the wings. And those guys just knew to go back door. Yeah. That showed me growth. Right. You know what I mean? So it can that continue? Well, now, don't get me wrong. I don't think Beth ain't gonna allow that to go down. You know what I mean? Um, those guys are a lot more sound sounder on, on, on the wing play on the defensive side for Bethlehem. I mean, them guys are up in you. Right. You're gonna fill them. Yeah. So your opportunity to go back door won't be so e won't be won't be won't be available. I mean, well, I, I, I will say this. I, I think what that alludes to a little bit is that you you have a team that you just played a team two weeks ago. That's true. That's true. That's true. Okay. That's they true. beat you by 19 points. Right. Right. You know what I mean? Goes back to what we said earlier with the hunted and the hunter. Right. You know what I mean? So now Albany High goes into hunting mode. So you you know what you just played them. You're reviewing some tape here, and you're seeing um, maybe we could get them back door. So you come in with a little game plan. Right. Maybe we mix it up and throw one three one zone. Yeah. It, it, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. it was one of those situations where your game adjustments worked for you. Right, it right. It paid off. And right. the fact that Troy went just ice cold it, from the uh, field. I don't think I've ever seen a team go like ice cold like that. Couple with that, Coach. <laughs> so that's what you saw. I, yeah. I cannot – possibly see it was one of those things you caught Troy not to take nothing away from Albany they came in Troy in their environment and they went yeah, they there they did right they, they did go to Troy that's right so that's it wasn't right. it wasn't like Troy handed them anything right or right. laid down and they took the game right you know right, what I mean right. but if I I could still say you caught if you wanted to catch a team on one of their worst nights you caught them. oh yes you know what I'm that, saying yes, you yes, yes. so that that I don't perceive will happen against 
um, Bethlehem. No. You know what I mean? And you got the, you know, you got the, you, you know, you got the issue too with the the death perception, uh, perception behind the backboards of the Valley. You know, right. so there's a lot of things that's new to to to, the, to those guys over well, there. Well, it'd be interesting what what team adjusts to that. I mean, right. each team has to deal with that. You're not in the com, you're not in the confines of your own home. Yeah, right. that's you know right. What I mean, that's right. there's there's a neutral site going on. So both teams have to deal with that. I just yeah. think that Bethlehem just brings so much to the table. With the, they, like we talked about, they're a hard hat, lunch pail type of team, man. And I mean, we saw them against Colin. They were right there, man. Yeah, so yeah. I mean, Bethlehem is tough. I mean, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and you know how we feel about those kind of teams. That's right. It's just, it's just that simple. I mean, Bethlehem was down 11, not 13, nothing, coach, and came back against uh, Colony. You know what I mean? Absolutely. It came down. It came down to the last three seconds. Of down, the game. Down to the wire. <laughs> so. With a possession that if Coach A.G. Iron probably had back and called a timeout prior to that 24-second yeah. shot clock yeah. getting down to one second, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. it, 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 it came down as close as that yes. in that game. So, That's right. Yeah, That's Bethlehem right. is battle-tested. They're ready. They're, they're ready. I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see Bethlehem there at the end. Yeah, yeah. Okay, Coach. Um, so that's that's gonna do. Unless you want to talk about something else, what else you got in your mind, Coach? Um, oh yeah, we're sorry about the broadcast last game. The the game against Albany versus Troy. We had a technical difficulties uh, throughout the night that day, so we weren't able to upload it. But um, hopefully everything goes right tomorrow, and we'll get you some footage um, and broadcast a great game for you guys. So um, you want your two TV signing off. Peace. Peace.